this is crazy. This build is running two subclasses at the same time. Welcome to Will It Build, the series where I take your builds from my YouTube comments and Discord server and put them to the test to see if they are the real deal. If it's solid, then I'll gift you 1,000 silver. And if it's really something special, you'll be featured in a dedicated build video for your submitted build. So comment yours below so we can answer the question, Will It Build? Welcome to a brand new episode of Will It Build, your favorite build series on YouTube. I wanted to start today by showing that we revamped the Will It Build channel where you submit your builds to be reviewed in these videos, and we made it a forum-based channel. So now, you know, look how pretty it looks. It's got a bunch of tiles. You can put a bunch of pictures in your posts. This person, uh, they even they even have memes. So yeah, here we go. The build that we are looking at today is submitted by Stick Id Phil called Weakening Threadlings. Apparently, it is a way to have weakening capabilities by being on a void warlock, but still be able to generate threadlings, which of course are a strand specific thing. So a very unique build that I've honestly never seen before in all of my time playing the game. So I'm very interested in this one. I wanna talk about a giveaway because we always do a giveaway in this stream. I am going to be giving away three tabula brassa emblems through this video. However, I'm going to be giving them away through different methods. One of the emblems I'm going to be giving away will be given to someone who likes the video, is subscribed to the channel, and comments down below literally anything. You can comment whatever you want, say that you like the video, say that you like Will Builds, whatever you want. As for the other two, if you're watching this video right when it releases, we are probably live over on Twitch. Uh, it's my birthday, actually, and we're doing a Lego building stream for my birthday, building this bad boy. So the other two Tabula Rasa emblems will be given away in this stream. So come on and hop over to twitch.tv slash Mactics. Uh, let's first go ahead and let's just take a look at this screenshot that they have set up for us. So how well do I remember ability icons thing? Okay, so it looks like they have Healing Rift, Pocket Singularity, Vortex Grenade, so we're good to go there. Child of the Old Gods and Feed the Void, so we're good to go there. And then for the fragments, I think that first one, it looks like Persistence and Starvation, if I'm not mistaken. So Persistence, Starvation. Yep, that looks about right. I don't know what those other ones are. Is that under? No, okay. Reprisal is the other one. And then what's that last one? Is it this one? Harvest? Yeah, it looks like Harvest. Okay, so we have got Persistence so that all of our Void buffs, probably specifically Devour in this build, have increased duration. We have starv we have Starvation so that every time we pick up a Void Breacher and Orb of Power, we get Devour. We have Reprisal so that when we get Final Blows when surrounded by Combatants, we get Super Energy, presumably for more Nova Bombs. And we have Harvest so that anytime we defeat a weakened target, we create an Orb of Power and a Void Breach. One thing right off the bat that I'm kind of curious about is I'm not sure if we're going to need the Echo of Starvation and Feed the Void. I'm assuming they must use Feed the Void so that we get the benefits of pre-nerf Devour, whereas we would just get the benefits of the new regular Devour, just 100 HP on every kill, um, since that is what you get with Devour if you're not using Feed the Void. However, it, it feels like we're going a little bit overkill when it comes to the Devour acquisition methods. Of course, we will go ahead and give it a try. I'm wondering if we might want to go ahead and switch to Chaos Accelerant instead of Feed the Void as we make our way through this video. We will see. So that is our subclass setup. Um, as far as how this whole thing works, the exotics I chose are Quicksilver Storm as it makes tangles and is a strand weapon, and Swarmers as destroying tangles creates threadlings. So we already have those on right here, so I guess that's the way we're going to be able to make threadlings even though we're on a void subclass. So we have swarmers right here where destroying a tangle spawns a threadling and then we have Quicksilver Storm over here where of course the catalyst, this weapon's damage type becomes strand. Final blows with grenades from this weapon create tangles. So we can use the catalyst of Quicksilver Storm in the grenade alternate firing mode to create tangles which can then make threadlings through swarmers. Um, another good thing to know as well that they say here is that there is an artifact mod called the Horde Shuttle right, right here in the final column. I have an unlock available too. Damaging unraveled targets with a weapon occasionally spawns a threadling, which is actually going to be really, really solid with this because if we go back and look at the swarmers, we notice that threadlings unravel targets that they damage. So in theory, we'll be able to infinitely create threadlings just by shooting at a target 
that is unraveled, which will then create a thread link, which will then unravel a target, which will then create a thread link, and so on and so forth. And all at the same time, we get to weaken a bunch of targets because uh, we're, of course, on a void subclass and we have a bunch of abilities to be able to do that. I feel like this build could potentially be absolutely ridiculous against bosses because in theory, as long as you're continuously shooting them with a weapon, you have infinite thread link generation and you don't even have to be on strand subclass. You can be on void, which is arguably much better for boss DPS with the weakening capabilities and the Nova bump. They say that the fragments are not very important, so they just showed them to us in the picture. So I'm gonna assume that they're kind of giving us the liberty to change around fragments if we feel like we need to. As far as our mods go, it looks like we've got ashes to assets and a strand siphon, which makes sense because our primary weapon is of course strand. We're gonna go with ashes to assets and we're gonna make sure we get our strand siphon. Um, and then I guess we'll go, I suppose we could bump up this mod, but we'll go like a full discipline mod or something like that will be nice. Down on the gloves, it looks like, I think that's momentum transfer, bolstering detonation and firepower, if I'm not mistaken. So we have the bolstering detonation. We have momentum transfer, uh, indeed. And then we'll need to swap out this resilience mod so we can go ahead and throw on a firepower so that our grenade final blows create orbs of power. We'll then go ahead and slap on minor resilience mods. So we stay at tier 10 resil and then we'll come down to the chest piece where it looks like they're just setting, up, uh, setting us up with resistance mods. So we'll go ahead and come down here. We'll probably go harmonic resistance, concussive dampener, and then maybe we'll go in arc resistance, I guess. Down on the boots, it looks like we have recuperation and then double, is that absolution, I think? Yes, so it looks like they have us on double absolution along with recuperation. My one concern here is I feel like recuperation um, you know what? I'm going to make an executive decision here and say no to the recuperation. And the reason why is because it is absolutely useless with the current setup of the build because it'll give us a heal every time we pick up an orb of power. However, with the setup that we already have with Echo of Starvation, we get Devour every time we pick up an orb of power, which also procs Devour and will instantly heal us to 100% HP. So this recuperation is literally doing nothing for us. So I'm gonna make an executive call right out the gate and swap this over to something else. Uh, maybe Innervation instead is what I'm gonna start with. Then on the class item, it looks like we have got Bomber, Distribution, and Utility Kickstart. So we'll go ahead and get ourselves set up with those. To get Utility Kickstart, it looks like I do have to get rid of this resilience mod, unfortunately. Go boom and boom. There we go. So here's our final mod setup that we're kind of cooking with. We're gonna start out with this, but I think I'm gonna make some tweaks down the line, specifically the distribution and the double absolution. These mods that cost so much energy, even though they do give ability energy to all three of your abilities, it's not a significant amount, in my opinion. Um, as far as our other weapons, it I don't see them recommending really anything other than the Quicksilver Storm. So I think we'll go ahead and use our best judgment when it comes. I think I'll stick with this Retrofit Escapade, fourth times in target lock. It's pretty good for boss DPS. And then for my special weapon, because I like blinding grenade launchers or disorienting grenade launchers, whatever. Um, okay. Ooh, this could be really good too. Picking up an orb of power grants strand weapons on raveling rounds. That could be really solid as well. We should probably look into that. Oh, no. this is by far my least favorite modifier. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get a grenade going and then I can kill an enemy with the grenade and then I can break that tangle and that'll spawn Threadlings and then the Threadlings unravel this guy and then I can shoot the unraveled guy and that'll spawn more. Oh yeah, look, spawned our Threadling. It's kind of hard to see because I'm about to wipe to the pervading darkness. Ooh, let's drop a little grenade on these fellas. And they're dead. Okay, we have three grenades prepped, so let's get one off early. And then we'll get our tangle. And then that should spawn some threadlings. Oh, but that guy will spawn threadlings because he's unraveled. And then our threadling will jump on these guys and unravel them. And then we can shoot these unraveled guys to spawn more threadlings. And then the threadlings unravel that wizard, so we'll shoot that wizard to spawn more threadlings. Oh, look at them go. Do I have to shoot the tangle while I'm using swarmers? Because it seemed like when I threw the tangle, it didn't spawn threadlings in any way, spawn threadlings, but I could be wrong. Let's test right here. 
Yeah, so it does look like you have to shoot the tangle. You cannot throw it. If you throw the tangle, it will not spawn the gremlins. Which is weird, because I, I could have sworn that for swarmers you didn't have to do that. Okay, so we've got some unraveled targets here. Yep. This is going great already. Um, but I need to make sure I get my grenades prepped. We need like a we need like a tanky boss. Oh, here's some crawls, uh, but they died. I think this build could be extremely potent if you're playing with like friends or clannies who are also using strand subclasses because then they can effectively start your loot for you by unraveling a target and then that just lets you shoot at that target which thanks to the artifact mod will allow you to start generating threadless. All right, so we have a little bit of prep work to do before we actually start fighting the boss. So let's get our devourer going. And then start killing these enemies. We have three of our grenades prepped as well. We can use our disorienting grenade launcher too. And then here's probably a good time. Now we have our unraveled wizard, and we can go ahead and shoot at her. That'll make friendlings for us. But I want to make sure we're ready to make friendlings when it's boss time. So we'll go ahead and prep another three grenades. And then I'm going to try and make a tangle. There we go. get a grenade on this guy and then if I shoot this tangle I'll make two threadlings and hopefully one of them runs at the boss which it looks like it will now this boss is unraveled and so beaming it should just constantly make threadlings and then those threadlings will go ahead and attack the boss which will make it unraveled again Um, I can't really see if Redlings are bouncing off him or not. There's kind of a lot going on right now. Okay, so now he's unraveled. Now that there's a little less visual clutter, can we see if we are making Redlings? Um, it seems like it's not generating Redlings for some reason. Maybe it doesn't work for bosses? Or was that one right there that just happened? They might just be blowing up on the boss immediately so I can't actually see them. Okay, well, there's one right there. So, yeah, I, th I think it was making Threadlings. I think they maybe they're just instantly exploding. Now, as we go into this wave two, I do want to make those changes I referenced earlier, where I want to give it a go, trading out Feed the Void and take Chaos Accelerant. I think we'll still be fine in always having Devour up through the Echo of Starvation. So I just want to see if this still feels decent. Another thing I want to do, actually, if I'm going to do that, if we're going to rely a little bit more on our grenades, is I want to drop the Echo of Reprisal and instead go with the Echo of Undermining so that we can have weakening grenades as well. So we'll go ahead and slot that in. So we have this guy unraveled, but unfortunately... Ooh, look at that. Dude, the crazy thing about Unravel is it spreads so well. You see all these, like, green darts that will just instantly go to other targets the second that you kill a target that does have unravel on it you're basically like poisoning the entire battlefield with unravel always so we're gonna go back to a regular firing mode pop that generator threadlings oh yeah the plague wielders okay so this guy is definitely generating threadlings i saw that for sure now, let's see if we can notice the Threadlings. Okay, so this enemy is gen definitely generating Threadlings as well. However, this is a mini boss tier enemy. And I think the big difference to note is going to be are we generating Threadlings on the boss tier enemies? I feel like we were. It's just kind of tough to see. The time will come. By the way, is that whenever I shoot something with the Strand Grenade, it's making that target unraveled. Do the strand grenades inherently give the unraveling debuff? Because if so, that is extremely potent because that means you don't even have to make the tangle in the first place. 
to create the threadlings, you can just unravel a boss by shooting at it with the strand grenade from Quicksilver Storm. Oh, it's probably this. Picking up an orb of power grants strand weapons unraveling rounds. Okay, so that's probably what's going on there. Okay, so now we have another boss. Here's where we're really going to want to pay attention to whether or not we're generating tangles when we are fighting an unraveled boss. So let's make sure we're paying very, very close attention to that. Okay, so if we kill that enemy, we'll shoot this. That'll make our tangles, and that tangle will run to this host unraveled and then his friend is also unraveled making more tangles i feel like i'm not making uh nearly enough use of my grenades something noticing right away so i'm gonna try and do a better job with that okay so this boss is definitely unraveled no doubt about it let's get a little nova bomb on him and i'm just trying to Pay attention to if it's making red things. I really can't tell. It's hard to tell. I definitely see the unraveling, the green bolts flying all over the place, but I... Oh, there's one. There's one right there. Okay. I 100% saw that one. So yes, is indeed making red things. We are 100% making red things. There's just so much going on that it's hard to tell. Andy's being weakened by our child of the old gods right now as well, as you can see. So we have that debuff going. This is the, this is what they had in mind, I believe. Continuously damaging a boss, continuously generating threadlings, and continuously having it weakened, which is pretty cool. And the strand grenades do some sizable damage as well. We absolutely melted that guy. He, he got obliterated. And so far, I haven't really felt like I'm missing out on too much by dropping Feed the Void as an aspect and picking up Chaos Accelerant instead. I feel like I'm still having Devour up pretty much every time that I need it. One of the first things I want to do is kind of drop this distribution. I want to pick up a Reaper instead so that I have another way to create Orbs of Power to feed more into that Echo of Starvation so I can always have Orbs on the field, not only so I can always make sure that I have a way to get my Devour buff, but also to play more into this artifact mod, Unraveling Orbs, so that I can always have Unraveling Rounds on all of my Strand Weapons whenever I pick up an Orb of Power. Um, in that same vein, we also have Strand Siphon to make Orbs on the Strand Weapon Double Kills with Quicksilver Storm, going with a Harmonic Scavenger so I can have significantly more heavy ammo. Um, and then I'll use this final slot to go ahead and stick in an Innervation so I can have a little bit more grenade up time. That is kind of the only thing I would want to play around with, so maybe we'll go ahead and have that on and just see how it feels. Ooh, we're back in the spikes room. If I recall correctly, it's been a couple of days since we've done a Will of Build video, but I'm pretty sure that I am still undefeated to the spikes. Let's get the Child of the Old Gods rift down, get a little disorienting grenade going, and then we'll work our way in. We've got Drag Finalox with a brand new Prime sub over here on the Twitch. While I'm absolutely blasting these enemies, there's the volatile rounds. Remember that uh, on Void Warlock, our melee ability. All right, let's get our Chaos Accelerant Grenade going. That'll do tons of damage. It'll also give us uh, the weakening debuff on everything that it touches, thanks to the Echo of Undermining. And it'll create orbs of power for us so that we can get our Devour buff. Very nice. I'm going to rotate over here. Whoa. Okay, we have our Devour, and we're in our Healing Rift, so I think we're in a pretty good spot. Let's go ahead and try and get a Disorienting GL on that Wyvern so it stops bugging us. Just need to kill the proc the Devour. And our Chaos Accelerant Grenade, and the Wyvern got cooked anyway. And let's get a, let's get a Grenade on this guy. I still don't understand why I'm not generating tangles when I throw uh, the, or sorry, generating threadlings when I throw the tangle. I could have sworn that if you have swarmers on, it works whether you throw it or shoot it. Maybe it only works when you throw it if you're on a strand subclass. And that would be kind of weird, I think, but Destiny is a weird game. So, oh, perfect Nova Bomb time. I'm kind of contemplating things right now because I feel like if I stuck with Feed the Void where I get Devour and I reproc Devour every single time I get an ability kill, I think I might have lived there. 
Okay, we uh, have got this boss. Okay, so yeah, we're as you can see, you can see the threadlings skipping around. Boss tier enemies, when we shoot at them, definitely make threadlings. There's one right there. And this is a boss tier enemy, as you can see from the diamond next to his health bar. Really? I didn't even consider that. If you're running this build with teammates, and your teammates also have the horde shuttle mod on, all three of you will be spawning threadlings whenever... Yo, Gator, Puppet, if you guys haven't had it on already, do me a favor, go into your artifact, make sure you have horde shuttle on in the last column real quick. And then give me, give me a quick little emote when you have done that. I think we're about to triple our threadling production efficiency. Okay, we're going to get our Chaos Accelerant Grenade going. Oh, yeah. And then we get that orb to get our Devour. But I do have Reaper procs because I casted my class ability, so I'll get another orb right there. Pick this one up. There's my Devour, and then we'll kill a couple enemies to extend it and get our full heal. Not full heal, sorry. 100 HP heal. It's still pretty good, though. There's all the Treadlings. All right. There we go, and we'll get our Chaos Accelerant Grenade on him for the weekend. And we do have the boss unraveled. I do have some enemies on me though. Let's get our healing rift down, hopefully in time, just barely. And then we can shoot this to generate some Threadlings real fast. And as long as we continuously shoot this guy while he's unraveled, we should be good. Okay, let's get our Chaos Accelerant Grenade going. This will proc our firepower and make our orbs so we get... I mean, we already had Devour, so it didn't really matter. Dude, look at all the Strand stuff flying around the arena. And literally none of us are on a strand subclass. There's unravel going everywhere. There's threadlings going everywhere. Not a single player on our fire team is on strand. But we're getting all of the good parts of strand. And oh, I see the boss is above us. I'm gonna make sure that my child of the old gods runs over to the boss to weaken him. And then we'll just continue. And we have anti-barrier as well when we're standing in the well of radiance because it gives us the radiant buff. Unraveling Rounds grants Anti-Barrier 2, right? So if I pick up the Sword of Power, that'll give me Unraveling Rounds. And yeah, it does. 100%. Dang. Because, like, Unraveling Rounds is extremely... Or, sorry, not Unraveling Rounds. I mean, in this context, Unraveling Rounds, yes. But um, any Anti-Barrier buff is extremely potent. I wonder what the final boss is for this week's coil. Whoa! Um, this is beautiful. Uh, but I don't really keep up on... Sometimes I don't know what's going on in Destiny. Uh, and I pretty much never do the seasonal storylines. So if, if you're watching this right now and you're like, wait, how does Mac not know about this? Like, the... This was a, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, dang, this is a beautiful area. Is it reused assets? Probably. Does that mean it's not beautiful though? Oh, still looks crazy. This platform kind of reminds me of one of the Ascendant challenges. I feel like I've seen this platform before in one of those, maybe. Or maybe like the campaign mission, I don't know. Still looks really cool. Oh, so it's uh, it's basically the same mechanics. Are they just permanently spawning screeds? Okay, either we are bugged and we just kind of got screwed over, or the guys that spawn that give us the buff to shoot through their shields take way too long to respawn. What about my grenade like does a pulling vortex, right? Oh, no way that actually works. Oh my God, that works. I think we're bugged. They're not spawning. 
But wait, I can I can disorient him because he's a mini boss tier enemy. So it doesn't matter. I can just disorient him. And then kick him off. See ya. I win. <laughs> Bye. No way. There's no way that actually worked. I think. It just wasn't. Oh my god. I'm not on strand. I'm not even. Look at all the strand stuff. I'm not. <laughs> this is crazy. This build is running two subclasses at the same time. If you have been watching the video and you have made it to this point, I'm giving away a fourth emblem and I will only select people in the comment section that comment below what two subclasses you would love to see combined in Destiny. If, if, if Bungie gave us one day where they were like, hey, you can combine any two subclasses, go have fun. What two subclasses would you combine? Solar Warlock plus Arc Hunter. Strand Titan plus Stasis Hunter. Let me know. Comment down below. I'll pick one of you. That's the secret fourth emblem giveaway. Here we go. Oh, the Strand Grenades are so good. And we have Devour too, so we get a big old heal on each kill. Like, it's crazy. Get that weakening grenade on him. Tons of damage from the grenade, thanks to Chaos Accelerant, and he gets weakened. Alrighty. Alright, we actually need to kill these guys this time because there's no ledge to push this boss off of. Get a little disorienting GL action on here so these guys can't see. There's our ephemeral virus times three. Strand grenade. Shoot this to make our threadlings. Definitely want to kill that well collector. Gonna beam him. And I think the boss's shield is down. And we have a Well of Radiance down, Weakening Grenade, plus Child of the Old Gods on him, plus he's Unraveled, so he's going to generate Tangles from me and all three of my teammates. Anytime we do weapon damage. Tangle, Tangle, Tangle. I keep saying Tangles. I mean Threadlings. There's too many T words for Strand. Oh my god, I almost have my super back. How did that happen? Okay, let's throw this, get Volatile on him. So he's got Volatile, he's Weakened, he has Unravel, he's making Threadlings. Look at all the Unravel. All the Unravel, all the Threadlings. No one is Fun Strand. I think this is the fastest I've killed a Tier 4 boss. Like, without a doubt. GG. Dude, that was so fun. Will it build? Absolutely yes. That is definitely the winner of a thousand silver. Final setup, we got this. I went with this for the subclass. Although, to be completely honest, I think what they recommended would work perfectly fine too. As far as my mods, this is what I ended up with. Uh, in my personal opinion, this is what worked the best for me. Again, what they recommended, aside from that recuperation, I think is a little bit redundant. I think what they recommended would work perfectly fine too. I think I might go as far as is to make a build video for this. So if you would potentially want to see a fully fleshed out build video that involves a little bit more research and involves the most perfected possible form of this build, hit that subscribe button so you can catch that. If you want your build featured in one of these Will It Build videos, all you have to do is submit it here in the Will It Build channel of my Discord server, which is linked in the description down below. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.